Aircraft in Legions Imperialis pack a punch. Combining a very fast movement characteristic, along with a large arsenal of weapons, and a jinx save for survivability. Now, initially, I was a little reluctant to get aircraft for Legions Imperialis. After all, I wanted to field large squadrons of tanks and infantry. That said, painting the Lightning Fighter for the Solar Auxilia was a lot of fun, though admittedly not without its challenges. In particular, trying to figure out the color scheme that I was happy with was a little bit of a challenge, but you'll see that as we go through painting this miniature. Ultimately, I'm actually pretty happy with the end result. As with most of my miniatures, I start using Vallejo's light gray as a primer. Over the top of this, I use a base coat of cold corpse blue from Two Thin Coats. And this color is consistent with the vehicles that I am fielding for my Solar Auxilia army. Now to give the miniature a little bit more depth, I then do a quick top-down highlight using Wolf Grey. Now the trick here with uh, my aircraft is that I'm effectively doing a top-down highlight over the middle of the aircraft body and then around the outsides of the aircraft's wings. And this still allows the miniature to, to retain a little bit of interesting color variation on the wings which will uh, be particularly important once we start going and doing some edge highlighting. Uh, the next step is to add a couple of stripes onto the wings. And for this, I'm using Tamiya tape effectively on either side. That's a relatively recent purchase of mine, but I've, I found it to be quite good. The resulting edges are nice and sharp, and you're able to remove it without removing any of the underlying paint. I've also found you can actually use it a couple of times across the miniatures as you're batch painting a few. Now for the actual color here, I'm using Sons of Horus Green. And unfortunately this ends up actually not looking great. There's really just not enough contrast with the blue that's surrounding it. And so this is something that we come back to fix up later on in the painting process. Now that we've laid down the base coats, we can move on to doing some panel lining. And so for panel lining here, I'm using Tempest Blue, which is a blue shade paint from Two Thin Coats. And I work my way around the panels and all the areas where there's a significant angle and add in some shading to really add some definition. And something that's important to call out here is I'm, I'm really not too worried about being super duper careful at this stage. It's okay if there's a little bit of paint spilling over the edges of the panels, because I'm gonna come along later and I'm gonna edge highlight each of these panels and it'll cover up any areas where the paint spilled over. And I'm also really only focusing on the top of the miniature here. There's a lot of detail on the underside and it would look fantastic painted, but realistically, most of the time, you're not gonna see the underside. So instead for the underside, we're really just focusing on key details that you might be able to see from the uh, tabletop. Following this, we move on to painting the frame of the cockpit. And so for this, we're using Overlord Brass, another two thin coats metal paint. This color is used as an accent through most of my Solar Auxilia army, through from the tanks all the way through to the aircraft. And so it really just helps to tie all of the different units together. So while we're painting the cockpit, we make sure to do the top and also to catch the, the bottom area at the bottom of the uh, sides of the cockpit. And we'll come back and we'll shade this and then paint the glass a little bit later. And so, as I alluded to earlier, the Sons of Horus Green really wasn't doing it for me as the stripe on the wings. Normally, when I'm using this paint, I'm able to take advantage of the natural geometry of the miniature and combine that with edge highlighting to help create a really visible transition between the colors. In this case, the blue was too close to the green and it just didn't stand out. And so sometimes this just happens. You have to be a bit reactive when the paint scheme you've got planned doesn't quite work out or doesn't look good actually on the miniature. And so I needed to get a bit creative. In this case, I decided to go over the stripes using a couple of coats of ghoul green. 
This really created a vibrant stripe along the wing and it helped it to stand out from the surrounding blue. But how about you? Have you ever had to salvage a paint scheme? Let us know in the comments. And so while I'm already painting this green color, I make the decision to add an accent to the tail fins. And that's just to really tie the whole mini together. And now onto the edge highlighting. For this, I start with Wolf Grey to outline each of the panels on the wings and also around other parts of the aircraft. I also take the opportunity at this step to make sure that I've covered up areas where I think the panel line or wash shouldn't have ended up. I also give the outside of the wings a quick highlight with gravestone blue and then give the green areas a highlight with a one-to-one -one mix of ghoul green and white star. After we wrap up the edge highlighting, it's time to start picking out some of those metal details on the fighter. For this, I'm going to be using the steel color from the Vallejo's Air Metal range. I absolutely love this paint. It's got such a great consistency and a really nice sheen to it. So we're gonna use this paint and work around the miniature, picking out individual details that should be metallic. So for example, we're gonna start by painting the weapons, then moving onto the nose and also painting the engines, the air intake, the jets on the underside, now, you might also want to take the time here to pick out some extra details. For example, you could paint some parts on the missiles. For this paint job though, we're going to give this a miss as you can't really see these very well from the tabletop. Now, once we're happy with the silver paint, we're going to move on to putting some Nuln oil over the areas we just painted, which will help to add a bit of definition and add a bit of a nice shade to the metals. And while we're doing some shading, we're going to add a bit of Agrax Earthshade over the brass color on the cockpit. Now, one thing to call out here, don't really worry about this spilling into the cockpit area as we're going to go over this soon and we're going to actually paint up the cockpit properly. For the actual cockpit area, we're going to use a effect similar to what you do on lenses for a larger scale miniature. And so we're going to effectively paint a gradient over the glass and then add a specular highlight to one of the corners. To start this process, we're going to use a coat of sentient turquoise. Now, realistically, this effect, it's a little bit over the top or not particularly realistic, but it does look really cool on the tabletop, especially for this scale. And at least in this case, for me, it trumps trying to paint it realistically. Now, after we've added that base color, we're gonna then add a large highlight into effectively two of the edges using cursed blue, just a little way out from the edge of the cockpit itself. And then working around and doing this on each of the windows, trying to be a little bit consistent where possible on which edges you're highlighting sort of to try and reflect where light is coming onto the glass. We're then gonna follow up with a slightly smaller highlight within the area we just painted, this time using Ray Gun Glow. And then to finish this off, we add a very small specular highlight into the opposing corner of the window. And this helps the glass to look really reflective or, or more like a mirror. And so for this, we're just going for just a little tiny dot using just the tip of the brush. After wrapping up the windows, I like to add just a little bit of detail to the ends of each of the missiles as ultimately you're gonna be able to see these from the top down. And so it can add a real interesting bit of color to the front of the miniature if you've got some brightly colored tips to the missiles. In this case, I'm using two different colors, a red and a blue to differentiate between the two types of missiles that can be armed on the Lightning Fighter. You might at this point also wanna add a little bit of extra color or detail onto the missiles. And that's the planes pretty much wrapped up. Now it's time for the bases. So off screen, I have primed uh, and painted the bases for the Lightning Fighters using a combination of dust bowl and sandstone paints through the airbrush. Now we're just gonna pick out the metal details using steel from the, uh, the metal color range again, 
and then painting over it with null oil. And there we have it. I'm really happy with how those fighters turned out. And I'm really glad that I decided to go and revisit my decision to use Sons of Horus Green for the stripes because those lighter green stripes stand out so much better. I hope this gives you some ideas for how you might be able to paint up your own aircraft in your own Solar Auxiliant Army. Thanks for watching.